In the previous video, we talked a little bit about quantum computers, the realistic relevance it's going to have in our quantum decryption spookiness, um, and a little bit about how the industry is going to handle migrating. But let's take a look really quick about what's actually happening at the Cypher Suite level for post-quantum cryptography. So here we have a beautiful little Cypher string, modern classical cryptography, TLS, ECDHE, RSA with AES, 256, GCM mode, SHA-256. Awesome. You see it everywhere. Protocol, handshake, authentication, AES is our algorithm, 256 is the strength of that algorithm, uh, Glarus counter mode is, our, is, is the mode, and SHA-56 is our hash. So the first part, we're creating keys providing an authentication, keys and authentication. We have our encryption, and then we have our HMAX, our hash-based message authentication. So the first part is intrinsically slow. It is the really complicated mathematics. The second part for the encryption needs to be very fast because that is going to be doing the bulk of the transport. And then the hash needs to be unique. So when we look at that, that's been working great. Peter Shore's algorithms, series of algorithms, and Dr. Lowe Grover's algorithms are what weakens all of this. The first part specifically, because it's based off using very large prime integers to try to make this impossible for common computers, Shore's algorithm um, has no problem bypassing it due to polynomial time in the quantum computers for his algorithms. In the middle, we have Grover's, which it's weakened. If we're using a weaker bit strength, Grover's algorithm has a quicker time to find the solution for that, in, uh, for that algorithm. Uh, if it is 256, it is still sufficiently large that Grover's does not pose an inherent threat compared to other methods. And then as for our hashing, Shore and Grover's both make that broken and or weak. So we have the first part is FIPS 203 solves for this, and the second part at the hashing, FIPS 204 and 205 solve for this. What are FIPS 203? And what are FIPS 204 and 205? So FIPS 203 defines a set of MLKEM for the TLS keys. Uh, MLKEM is Module Lattice Key Encapsulation Mechanism. It is what basically gives the first part of our handshake a big giant hug. Uh, FIPS 204 defines the MLDSA for digital signatures, which is going to solve for the second part. And then FIPS 205 defines the SLHDSA for the stateless hash based digital signature signatures. Um, those three together, standardized by NIST, they have gone through four rounds to get so far together, and the NSA chose the top variants of those FIPS uh, approvals for their implementation of CNSA 2.0. What does that mean? That means that the MLKEM is going to combine the elliptical curves, the classical cryptographic curve, uh, X25519, with a post-quantum key exchange scheme, which is Kyber 768 or Kyber 1024, depending on the level that you have to apply for secure quantum resistant TLS. So if we then look at like SEC P256, which is what we would see in OpenSSL, we add that to MLKEM768, that hybrid, which is why we say hybrid post-quantum cryptography, the hybrid of that output of the two cryptographic algorithms creates the session key used to encrypt the bulk of it, the TLS connection. So the X25519 facilitates key exchange through ECCDH, and then the MLKEM adds post-quantum key encapsulation. That's it. How is this getting implemented? How we are implementing all this is either through your hardware vendors using proprietary or open libraries that they're integrating into their hardware. Think firewalls, think um, web app firewalls, any SSL termination, or it's somebody using OpenSSL or Boring SSL. Even though Google's Boring SSL is kind of their own fork of OpenSSL, and they say, hey, don't use it, this is for us, people still use it. Um, what has happened is we have an open quantum safe uh, consortium or project effectively to bring a separate binary of libraries that are specifically for the quantum resistance ciphers into OpenSSL. So up until version 3.5, that meant OpenSSL 
compiling your own lib OQS provider and then adding it in and adding a couple little extra statements to your gen key, gen p key um, insert information like as of version 3.5 that is fully baked into OpenSSL for easier compilation of whatever web server um, or system that you're using. Thank you OpenSSL for the hard work, huge. And thank you OQS, OQS team. That is how we are bringing quantum ciphers into OpenSSL, and that's how we're going to bring quantum ciphers into your applications. Again, this isn't long, because what we have is, instead, we've actually built a little lab, so if you want to try this on your own, you can spin up a VM or a Docker container and run your own OpenSSL post-quantum cryptographic secured certificate authority lab that we've built over at F5 Dev Central's GitHub. So check that out. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let us know and we'll be happy to answer them. If you like this video, do all the buttons you want to do. I can't tell you what to do, but thank you very much for watching. Mahalo. Thank you.